De La Hoya, the prominent promoter, is practically pleading on his knees for Ryan to return to Golden Boy. It's almost reminiscent of a cliched romantic comedy scene, but within the gritty realm of boxing. Yes, you heard it correctly. De La Hoya's fervent plea for Ryan's comeback is undeniably manipulative. You know, one thing that's been on my heart is uh, the statements that Bernard made where he could decide if I'm going to finish or if I should continue boxing after this fight. He don't, he, he don't decide that. My coach does, my team does, everybody that, you know, grinds with me day in and day out. That's who decides and ultimately God decides, not him. Nobody was uh, telling him when to stop boxing. You know, he stopped boxing at 145, so kudos to him. But he don't determine that. Uh, and another thing I want to touch on is, uh, you know, Oscar saying that, you know, we, we misinterpret, uh, you know, what they say. It's plain English. I, I didn't hear anybody speaking in any language I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, it's very clear to me that, you know, they're back at this guy to beat me just like they thought he know was going to beat me. He was the next Filipino star. They say he's the next Mexican star. You know what? I, I, I put everything into this fight. It's a classic guilt trip aiming to sow doubt in Ryan's mind about leaving by painting a distorted and bleak picture of what lies beyond Golden Boy. They mention Ryan as a Golden Boy legend in the making, attempting to pull on emotional strings and cast doubt on his departure. It's a selfish prediction, almost as if De La Hoya aims to boost his own ego instead of giving Ryan the rightful credit he deserves. It's a sly maneuver, leveraging Ryan's ambitions while conveniently ignoring past mistreatment. Then comes the warning, a veiled threat in its essence, cautioning against making a decision that might lead to regret. De La Hoya is behaving as if he holds some unseen leverage, employing this tactic to instill fear and uncertainty in Ryan, ensuring he remains under Golden Boy's shadowy influence. But that's not all. De La Hoya's acknowledgement of their differences lacks sincerity. I know we had our differences, but know this. I always thought I could expect the best from you. It's a backhanded acknowledgement, deftly avoiding addressing the issues at hand. De La Hoya himself being the root cause of those differences, yet placing the blame on Ryan, is a classic maneuver. His insistence that Golden Boy remains the right place for Ryan is a final attempt to manipulate him back into a toxic environment. It's a villain's plea aimed at retaining control and power rather than genuinely caring about Ryan's well-being. There's a lot to unpack here. Let's delve into the heart of this boxing drama. Promoter Oscar De La Hoya and his starfighter Ryan Garcia have been locked in a heated conflict for months. It's not your typical disagreement between a promoter and a fighter. It's escalated into a full-blown feud. The rift began after Garcia's defeat to Gervonta Davis in April at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Garcia, known for speaking his mind, openly criticized the situation. De La Hoya's absence at the post-fight press conference sparked the beginning of intense confrontations. De La Hoya retaliated against Garcia, igniting a heated exchange that turned the boxing world into a battleground of verbal jabs and counterpunches. The tension heightened when Garcia shared a picture on Instagram hanging out with none other than Floyd Mayweather Jr., De La Hoya's long-standing rival. Unable to resist, De La Hoya responded with a sardonic comment beneath the post, a classic move for him. However, the drama didn't stop there. Golden Boy initiated legal action against Garcia and his manager, Lupe Valencia, concerning the status of Garcia's contract with the company. The press release clarified that Golden Boy aimed to ensure that Ryan and his team would uphold the remaining terms of his contract. However, Garcia's legal team retaliated by filing a motion to dismiss. Mayweather himself expressed admiration for Garcia, mentioning that he would gladly promote him if he were not bound by contractual obligations. Despite the legal disputes and verbal clashes, De La Hoya surprisingly announced an expectation to reveal Garcia's next fight soon. Now, on to the intriguing part, the press conference showdown between Garcia and De La Hoya. Garcia didn't hold back. He took a jab at De La Hoya, airing his grievances and accusing Golden Boy promotions of lacking support. The tension soared as Garcia directly confronted comments made by Bernard Hopkins, a significant figure within Golden Boy promotions. According to Garcia, Hopkins had suggested that he would have influence over whether Garcia should continue boxing after his upcoming fight. This deeply unsettled Garcia, as he strongly believed that such determinations should solely belong to him, his coach, and his team. His response wasn't just about asserting his independence, it was a bold challenge to the traditional power dynamics prevalent in boxing. 
Garcia emphasized, I decide if I should continue boxing after this fight. Not him, not my coach, not my team, everyone who supports me daily. Garcia made it clear that this wasn't just a personal affront, but a stance for autonomy, challenging the conventional norms of control in boxing promotion and management. Fast forwarding to the aftermath of the press conference, Garcia accused De La Hoya of supporting his opponent. Oscar Duarte's actions led to misinterpretations, fueling Garcia's determination to address a potential strain in their relationship. This hinted at a possible lack of mutual trust and support. Garcia's decision to express his concerns publicly was calculated. It aimed to shed light on the typically concealed aspects of boxing management. His actions emphasized the necessity for transparency and respect in the athlete-promoter relationship. As the boxing community contemplates this incident, it serves as a reminder of the evolving dynamics in sports management. For Garcia, this wasn't solely about airing grievances, it was about standing up for his rights as an athlete. The impact of this situation on his relationship with Golden Boy Promotions and his future in boxing remains uncertain. Nevertheless, it undeniably signifies a pivotal moment in his career. Now let's pivot and explore De La Hoya's reaction to Garcia's sharp remarks. De La Hoya's response at the press conference was layered, unveiling insights into the intricacies of their professional rapport. He showed apprehension for Garcia's mental well-being, suggesting that Garcia might require assistance. This transition from professional disagreements to personal concern aimed to infuse empathy into the conflict. However, it also sparked debate about discussing an athlete's mental health within a context already charged with professional tensions. In a subsequent interview following the press conference, De La Hoya sought to elucidate the situation between Garcia and Hopkins. He referred to Garcia as a kid and claimed that there was a misunderstanding in how Hopkins' message was interpreted. When you're dealing with kids, it's really hard to get that message across, and then you have Ryan saying this and that, it's all bees. De La Hoya remarked. The use of the term kid indicated a generation gap between them. While seemingly innocuous, this term might imply belittlement, suggesting that Garcia's maturity and comprehension of the boxing industry were underestimated. It hinted at a dynamic where the younger athlete might be perceived as less experienced or knowledgeable, potentially leading to conflicts in communication and decision-making. De La Hoya's comments underscored the communication challenges between established figures in boxing and the younger generation of fighters. His remarks implied that conveying certain messages to younger athletes like Garcia could be challenging due to differing perspectives on the sport, career management, and athlete representation. The response also hinted at deeper issues within the professional relationship between De La Hoya and Garcia. The lack of mutual understanding and respect implied by his reply could be a significant factor contributing to the tensions between them. In the competitive and high-stakes world of boxing, such misunderstandings can carry significant implications for both the athlete's career trajectory and the promoter's business dealings. Now let's shift our focus to the role of a promoter in managing athletes. While promoters have the responsibility of advancing their fighters' careers, this incident raises pertinent questions about finding a balance between promoting a fighter's professional interests and respecting their autonomy and personal boundaries. This is where the complexity of the situation deepens. Alvarez expressed his allegiance while also pointing out De La Hoya's business-oriented nature, stating, I don't know if he's a good person or not, but I think he's all about the business, no loyalty. This isn't the first instance where a boxer has had a falling out with De La Hoya and Golden Boy promotions. The turmoil involving Alvarez, who officially parted ways with Golden Boy in November 2020, adds another layer to the ongoing saga between Garcia and De La Hoya. Reflecting on Alvarez's departure, De La Hoya cited the whispers in fighters' ears as a significant issue. He likened the situation with Alvarez to a marriage, emphasizing the importance of navigating through challenging moments. However, the pressing question lingers. What lies ahead for Garcia and De La Hoya? Only time will unfold the next chapters in this enthralling tale of boxing egos and the ever-evolving dynamics of athlete-promoter relationships. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.